Thanks for listening to... Bone Radio. And it's the show with no name, and it's time for Liftoff in... 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, let's go. 1, 0, ignition. Cross your fingers, folks. Cross your fingers. Yes, strap on yes, your seatbelt. Yes, yes, fasten your seatbelts. Yes, Hold yeah. on to your hat. Get ready for the ride of your it's life. The show with no it's show with no name time. time. On Bond Radio. Radio. It's a show with, with no name time. Let's go. That's right, amigos. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. It's the show with no name, and man, we've got an awesome show for you today. I'm just taking a look at the script, and man, <laughs> we're going to laugh. We're going to play. I'm going to challenge you. We're going to share. And most of all, we're going to have tons of fun, as we always do here on the show with no name on Vaughn Radio. I imagine you guys are warmed up. My buddy Fitz must have warmed you up in his program. No excuses. And if you haven't listened to it, well, you've got no excuses. Also, you got a brand spanking new episode of FYI for your English. It just dropped last Friday. It's an episode on mountains, or as we say in the States, mountains. That's right, mountains. <laughs> well, that's how we say it, folks. And now... It is less than a week away, folks. You know, I have been waiting. I have been like on tenter hooks. How do you say it in Spanish? Uh, in asquas? Is that the word? On tenter hooks, waiting for it. And finally, this coming Saturday, it becomes a reality. It's Feria del Libro Madrid. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time of year again. Spring has sprung, and that means it's time for the book fair at the Retiro Park in Madrid. It kicks off on May 26th till June 11th. Join us at Grupo Von Stand, Stand 312-312. I'll be there with Damian Moya presenting our latest book. And my amigos will be there signing their books as well. Don't miss... Julia Linares, or Jules, host of the Let's Get Random show. Dave Boys, host of The Salads. Jimena Holiday, host of Test Your English. Guy Williams, host of Western Civilization. Natasha Pasqua, host of Back to Basics. Kyle Miller, from The Drive Time Show. Richard Vaughn. And many more. Meet your favorite Vaughn presenters, teachers, and authors at Feria del Libro 2023. Stand 312. Check out our website for the complete schedule. GrupoVaughn.com. And follow us on social media for further updates. 
Feria del Libro 2023 with Baudan at the Retiro Park in Madrid. Join us at Stand 312-312. Oh yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Jot it down if you haven't. I'll be there with Damian Moya my partner in crime, and we will be there Saturday, May 27th. That's this coming Saturday. Saturday, June 3rd, the following Saturday, and the last day of the book fair, Sunday, June 11th. All of those will be from 11 to 2 p.m. Man, I can't wait. I can't wait to have the new book in my hand. This book is The Shit. And we'll be signing it, stamping it, taking selfies, all at Stand 312, where you can see Dave Boys from Vaughn Radio. He'll be there Saturday, June 10th, from 10.30 to 12.30. Then you got Kyle. He'll be there Sunday, June 4th, from 12 to 2. See Mena and her book, or her many books, but the latest one, Expresiones in Inglés, She'll be signing it Saturday, June 3rd at 5 p.m. and Sunday, June 11th, also at 5 p.m. Tosh Pasqua with a one-time appearance, the host of Back to Basics on Vaughn Radio. She'll be there June 11th from 12 to 2. Anybody who's paying attention will realize Damian, Tosh, and yours truly will be there June 11th at that time. As of 12 o'clock, we'll all be there. Then you've got Guy Williams. He'll be there June 11th, but from 7 to 9. So in the evening. And then he'll be there again on June 4th. That uh, Sunday. It's a Sunday, June 4th. And Jules Linanis, who hasn't written any books yet. But I know many of you want to meet her and reach out, contactar con ella. She'll be there June 28th. 7 p.m. You got more dates at our website, grupovon.com. You can get materials too at vontienda.com. Oh, and don't forget to mark your calendars for our trivia night, June 7th at 8.30 p.m. at Roll Madrid. Nacho, Andy, and Rob from the Lunchtime Show, they will be hosting a triple threat Triple amenaza. It's going to be tons of fun, especially if you know those three cats. Esos tres pájaros. We would say cats, maybe. Uh, cats. Uh, there are many ways to say it, but cats is a... It reminds me of jazz music. You, you guys are cool cats. So check out my friends Nacho, Andy, and Rob, June 7th, 8.30 p.m. As your social planner and your teacher, I know... Your social calendar is full now, at least for the next month, the rest of May and June. All right, amigos, you can get all the information at our website. It's groupofon.com. But right now, it's time for our pop quiz. Come on. Quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. That's right. That's right, folks. It's our pop quiz for those of you who love challenges and also challenges. Remember, when we look at challenges, we look at them from social media or maybe one of our materials. Today, it's coming right out of the book, 
Essential English, which is great because it has English in all different situations. You can pick it up at the book fair. It's one of our latest materials. Essential English. I highly recommend it. Uh, we're going to look at giving directions today. So giving directions obviously is something that I think everybody needs to know. And not just giving directions, but understanding the directions that have been given. So if you want to check out this book, you can get it at the Feria del Libro or you can get it at grupovon.com, at grupovon.com, where uh, you won't get the discount. If I'm not mistaken, at Feria del Libro, there's a discount, but it's well worth it. Vale la pena. It's well worth it. And it has downloadable audio, which I think is key. The book is called Essential English and it is great. So we'll take a look at some different translations to warm up, but let me give you the one I'm looking for, which is the hardest one. I scoured the page, mirar um, meticulosamente, and I found the hardest example. So here it is. This is your pop quiz. The pop quiz is, mantente a la izquierda en la bifurcación. Mantente en la izquierda en la bifurcación. And first thing I recommend you do is put your, whatever you, you use your GPS, if you use Apple Maps or Google Maps or Waze, no es Waze, it's Waze, Caminos. Um, make sure you put it in English because it's a good way to practice this vocabulary. So mantente a la izquierda en la bifurcación. That would be the translation. We'll see if you guys know it. If you didn't know it, you can get it right out of this book, along with some other ones that we're going to look at in just a moment. But speaking of books, I just want to remind you guys. So I just told you there's an FYI episode on mountains, which we just dropped on Friday. On Saturday, the bonus episode of the time episode, there are two episodes every week. That one just dropped. It is chock full of time expressions. Again, if you're just seeing the bonus episode, always listen to the first one first, even if you've heard it, because they go together. You know, I plan it so that you can listen to them as one piece, you know, for my students who get both of them every week. So, so many episodes out there. New ones are dropping all the time. And since we're talking about books a little bit today, I well, one of the first episodes, one of the earliest episodes that we did was on books. Here's the promo. We've been telling stories since the dawn of humankind. Only since fairly recently have we started to write these stories down. We fill the pages with words that tell the history of our world, the story of our lives. Only by documenting this may we keep our legacies and traditions alive. Calling all bookworms! Today, we're going to discover the spellbinding world of books on FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English, you got it. You got it. Wow, the show's come a long way. I think the quality of the show. I'm not saying it sounds bad. I hope not. But it doesn't sound as good as the ones I'm producing now, I think. And, well, I think after three years... Three years of producing the show, I, I've got a, some experience under my belt, in me, I bet. So, guys, uh, if you have any ideas for topics, upcoming topics, something you want to hear about in English, don't tell me now, don't tell me here, this is the show with no name, but you can write to me on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever, and you can send me your suggestions. I'd love to hear from you guys. In fact, uh, as I always say, my greatest suggestions have come from students. So if you want to hear about a certain topic, let me know. And uh, and we'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, I've, I've heard from so many students. If you haven't commented to, remember, you can rate the shows. It's very important. If you like the shows, the Vaughn Radio shows, uh, FYI, our side projects, make sure you give them five stars. Make sure you leave a comment because that is really, really helpful. Eso ayuda muchísimo. All right, well, uh, let's take a look at what we've got going on over here. Mantente a la izquierda en la bifurcación. That was our translation over there. All right, well, let's warm up with some over here. Okay. Gire a la derecha en el semáforo. Turn right at the traffic light. Or make a right. So 
look at that. If we say turn, we don't use a, uh, we say turn right. But if we say make, we say make a right. So make a right at the light or turn right at the light. The same thing with left, obviously. You've got go straight or straight ahead. Todo pa'lante, I think is the translation. <laughs> okay, the same thing. Pasas por, you go past or you go by. A lot of times we use landmarks when we're giving directions, right? And remember, when we give directions, as with any question, when we're asking someone for help, we usually use an indirect question. I don't say, where's the, where's the library? I would never say that. In a million years, it sounds rude to me. So that's where the indirect question comes in. Excuse me. First, I get their attention. Pardon me. Do you know, would you happen to know where the library is? Could you tell me? All of those are, a mil are more polite than where's the library. So I remember when students said, why do we practice the what do you want to know in the Vaughn method? I go, to practice indirect speech. And she goes, do we really need to know that? I'm like, do you want to be polite? Or do you just want to walk up to people and say, what's your name? Well, esa es un poco, esa no. but you know, like if you're asking somebody for something, you're going to want to be as polite as possible. You're, you're the one who needs information, not them, right? So could you tell me? This is where a good, a good thing, you can practice questions that you would ask when you're traveling and then put them into indirect questions. So where's the library? Where's the closest subway stop? And all you have to do is put them all in indirects. So do you know where the closest subway stop is? Could you tell me where the closest subway stop is? And this way, you're not just practicing questions. You're practicing the questions the way you would ask them. All right, so this is all out of essential English, el inglés imprescindible para situaciones cotidianas. All right, let's take a look at who's in our virtual chat room. We've got Laura. Laura says, good morning, gorgeous show with no namers. Let's kick off this week in the best possible way. Having a magical time with our favorite teacher, Double A. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Laura, you're so sweet. It's a pleasure to have you on board. Let's see who else is on board. We've got Kubla. Kubla says, greetings, delightful people. It's an honor to attend a class along with fellow students who always make the grade. Dan la talla. Great one, Kubla. Starting off with a bang. Great. To make the grade. Dar la talla. To measure up. Es otra forma. These guys measure up. Miven. Dan la talla. Makes sense. There's David. David's always here ready to rock. And I see he's definitely ready to rock. Good morning, David. Great to have you on board. There's Vero. Sweet Vero. She says, morning, beautiful show with no namers around the universe. Still a bit under the weather, but trying my best to overcome it. You are, you all are a good help. Well, glad to hear you're on the mend, Vero. On the mend, mejorándote, reparándote. <laughs> all right, let's see. I've got some people participating in our pop quiz. Laura, Laura's the first one to participate. And she says, keep left at the fork. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Keep left, sure. Keep left at, good, you got the preposition, at the fork or at the fork in the road, si queremos. Eh, pero te vale el fork, porque ahí en el contexto sabemos que no es el tenedor de la calle. And I always tell you guys, if you want to see this and get a visual, you know, remember this visually, all you have to do is think, uh, is watch that movie or watch the scene in The Muppets. El primer, la primera película de los teleñecos. It's a, it's a classic. It's a great movie. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? The opening scene is beautiful. It's Kermit in a pond. You're seeing him where he grows, where he grew up in a swamp. And there's a scene where they're driving and they ask for directions and they say, keep left. I think they said bear left. So there's another way to say it too. Bear left. 
Yeah, mantenerte es bear left at the fork in the road. Bear left. Or keep left. That's fine. We've also got Jaime. Jaime, you got it too. Nice job. Jaime. Born to Iron Man. There he is. I was curious, man. I was missing you there. He says, hi there, folks. How are things going? Well, great. Now that you're here, born to Iron Man, always a pleasure. Kubla says, keep left on the fork. I've never heard it this way. It could be British. I, I don't want to, but I've always heard at the fork, at the fork in the road. Yeah, Vero, you put the same preposition. You can check with your English teachers, but I've never heard it that way. At the fork. Keep left or bear left, right, is another way to say it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Kubla says, what's your name, ma'am? I'm confused. Oh, you're saying, oh, okay. I, I think I, Kubla, you got to give me context, man. A lot of times you, you just give me a sentence. I'm like, where, where? Because remember, in this brain, in 26 minutes, minutes, which is each part of the show, a million things happen. So what, what I looked at two minutes ago or three seconds ago, sometimes it's not in my head anymore. <laughs> so what's your name, ma'am? I imagine, I'm going to read your mind, Kubla, because that's what you're making me do without context. You want to you wanna point out that ma'am is polite. And sir, well, I'll, I'll add the sir. So good point. If that's what you were saying, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to guess. Sir or ma'am is really nice. Like when I want to refer to somebody, you know, with respect, el usted, I always say, excuse me, sir. No sir, sir. Es como si fuera una E. Excuse me, sir. Do you know what time it is? Y fíjate, eh, indirecta sin pensarlo. Excuse me, sir. Could you tell me what time it is? And we also say ma'am. Now it comes from madam. But madam to me sounds like somebody who runs a brothel. Un prostíbulo. So I wouldn't say, excuse me, madam. I would say ma'am. So in the United States, we say ma'am. Ma'am, not mom. Mom, it's different. Or the British say mum. So mom is ma uh, madre in English americano. Mum is madre in English británico. Y ma'am is señora. There you go, folks. But you got to get, you got to master those indirect questions. I'm telling you, they're so important. Let's see. There's Chris. Chris says, hi, Alberto and friends. Great to have you on board, Chris. Chris always brings the magic. She says, um, mm, 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 I, I've my ways in English. I have my ways in English. Excellent. I crack up when it pronounces the Spanish names with its English accent. Oh, yeah. You guys should just put your GPS. You should put it in in English just for the funny trans, you know, the funny pronunciation. Turn left in Plaza de Castilla. <laughs> Gonza, Gonza de Lima. Go, Lima. Lima. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, there's some funny moments there. There have been moments when my wife and I are driving in the car and she spits out one of those and it's hard to concentrate. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, okay, do it for the comedy, but also do it so you can learn this stuff. Make a right. Because you wouldn't say, you'd say make a right, as we said, or turn right. You can say go right. Okay, go right, turn right, make a right. Right? Those are different ways to say it. Let's see. German says, take the left fork. I'm not sure, though. You would say, let me let me tweak it, German. I like it. Take a left or bang a left. Get it? Más not el americano puro y duro. Bang a left at the fork in the road. But remember, when there's a fork, you're not really making a left. Right? No es un giro. Es sigues la corriente. So, I mean, I don't know the word bifurcación. I mean, I imagine I studied the manual in Spanish. <laughs> but it, it's because the word, the, the road forks. No, abre, abre más eh, venas there. So what happens is you have to make a choice. You're not really turning. 
right? You don't say turn left there because it could be confusing. That's why this is really important vocabulary. And this is vocabulary that you will find in essential English. El inglés imprescindible para situaciones cotidianas. You'll be able to pick it up at the Feria del Libro, which is right around the corner. I can't wait, folks. I hope you'll join us. Right now, though, we've got to go to a quick commercial break. I can't believe it myself. The first part of the show has flown by, but we've got so much to do in the second, third, and fourth part of the show. So, stick around. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name. Exclusively on Vaughn Radio. Yeah, welcome back, folks. Don't forget, you got amazing programs on Vaughn Radio all day long. Just download our free app. Also, you can download our episodes of all our different shows wherever you get your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iVox. I don't know. There's so many Deezer, Smeezer, Weezer, and Bleezer. They're all there. <laughs> All right, amigos, welcome back. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. As always, having fun, playing, and you won't believe how many challenges we've got ahead. But it's not going to feel like a chore. No, un deber. It's not going to feel like an English class. Okay, everyone, let's review the present perfect continuous. I refuse. Me, ne me niego, en serio. I refuse. All right, well, folks, let's kick off the second part with today's Say What? Say What? What? Folks, you're about to hear a famous person speaking English. And that person can be from any field. Sometimes we've got scientists. Sometimes we've got athletes. We've got all kinds of people from all different places. And it's just a way to train your ear to work on taking dictation and to work on summarizing what you've heard. That's such a great tool to be able to hear a paragraph and sum it up in a sentence or watch a movie and sum it up in a sentence, a synopsis. I mean, that's what it is. Or a song, what's it about? I mean, how many times in life do we have to answer that question? What's it about? De que va? 
I like your, your Spanish one. What are you about, bitter Cass? De qué vas, bitter Cass? <laughs> De qué vas, bitter Cass? Hey, these are these little cultural things that I love to learn. These little things that you'll find here on the show with no name on FYI and in all of my books, including my latest book, which is not available yet. The end of this week, it will be. I'll let you know when it's available. Then you can grab a copy. It's this book is the shit. And I know what you're thinking. Alberto, pero eso, eso no significa esto es la leche. Pues sí, por fin. Third time's a charm. Yeah, we finally got the title right in English. The other ones are wrong in English. We don't say the milk. We do say it's the shit, la bomba. Yeah. All right, let's take a look over here at who we've got in today's Say What Soundbite. As always, get ready, listen carefully, and write down as much as you can. This is the Say What Soundbite for the first time. The thing was, you know, I did something wrong, and uh, I was punished for it. I still believe rather harshly, because while I was in there, I almost daily I picked up papers and read about people doing exactly the same as I'd done. All right. There you go, ladies and gents. Ladies and gents is a shorter way to say gentlemen. All right, I'm going to play it for you in just a moment. I'll give it to you again, and we'll see what you guys heard. As always, in your best English, I want you to shine bright like a diamond. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's see. All right, ready? Here we go with the second listen of today's Say What Soundbite. The thing was, you know, I did something wrong and uh, I was punished for it. I still believe rather harshly because while I was in there, I almost daily I picked up papers and read about people doing exactly the same as I'd done. All right. There you go, folks. That's your Say What Soundbite. You'll hear it an additional two times in the third and fourth part of the show, respectively. All right. Uh, let's see what we've got over here. Uh, 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 Kubla says, I also cracked up the first time I heard Arkansas pronounced by a native. Yeah, it is an Indian word. So we got to follow them, right? Uh, if they say uh, that's how they say it's pronounced, well, uh, but it's interesting because in Spain, you guys say Arkansas, which is weird. Um, but yeah, we say Arkansas, Arkansas, uh, Indian word. Native American word. Let's see. Uh, Chris says, I've learned that shoulder is our thin, for instance, thanks to ways. Yeah, I love that. See, look at that. You're jotting down words there. So our thin. Yeah, shoulders. Let me see. Si sabes decir hombro? Hey, that could be a really good double trouble. And also we've got to give somebody the cold shoulder. Ya que estamos con el shoulder, Chris. You inspired, inspired me. Excuse me. Okay, so the guy in the shoulder, okay, with the broken shoulder, o sea, el tío en el arcén, con shoulder, co codo, no, that's elbow, uh, lo, lo acabo de decir y no me acuerdo. Um, okay, gave, ahora me acuerdo, shoulder, hombro. Uh, hizo el vacío a alguien. Gave someone the cold shoulder. Okay, now I forget, mira, de hablar tanto de arcén y la otra hombro, si es older. So, the guy in the shoulder with the broken shoulder gave me the cold shoulder. Toma. Hey, Chris, thanks for inspiring that one. <laughs> I love it. All right, we've got Jaime participating in our Say What soundbite. Let's see what Jaime heard. Jaime said, I can hear a man speaking fastly, okay, fastly or quickly, uh, talking about business, I think. Okay, he is speaking very quickly, and yeah, he is talking about some serious business. So I don't know if he's talking about business, negocios, pero asuntos serios, definitely. All right, Jaime. Kubla says it sounded like an American student wailing about his being punished excessively for an academia paper. All right, let's see. 
Uh, well, first, vocabulary, great. <laughs> Wailing, como llorando. Llora, ¿no? It sounded like an American student wailing about. Uh, well, there's another thing. He's not American. So, hmm, it's tough. I'm horrible at accents. So he's not American. I'll tell you that. And yes, he's being punished. He is complaining or whining about being punished excessively. Uh, but it's not for a paper. But all right, good, good stuff, good stuff. I asked you what you heard, not what he said. What he said is what he said, and we'll look at that after. Laura, Laura says, I heard an American young man. Interesting. Uh, either way, I'd say a young American man. Sound The order sounds better. I, I heard a young American man, but this person's not American, guys. I can promise you that. I know. <laughs> and I, I know because I know where the person was born, and that is not an, not an American accent. Hmm, interesting. This is, I love it when it gets like this. I heard an American young man, a young American man, perdona, who speaks a mile a minute. Native. That's uh, saying that he was punished harshly. Buena palabra esta. Harsh, harshly. Se usa bastante. El adjetivo harsh. And harshly es el adverbio. For something wrong he had done. Something that other people had done too. <laughs> Laura, spot on. If I have to hire a detective right now, I know who I'm hiring. I mean, you all did a wonderful job, but Laura is on the right track. The only thing is that accent eludes you all. <laughs> well, the good thing is you're going to hear that another two times a little bit later on in the show. Right now, it's time for our Spelling Bee. Spelling Bee. Let's go. Spelling Bee. Spelling B. Spelling B. Spelling B. That's right, that's right, folks. Welcome to our Spelling B. And uh, the reason we do this section is when I started teaching 20 years ago, I realized that Spanish people had a huge problem with spelling letters. Not all of them. If I said the, the letter L, nobody had a problem. But if I said E, A, or I, it's like their brain, like, and I get it. La E es la I. I get it. I get it. A es no es E. So, but I, I came across some serious deficiencies when it came to being able to spell your own email address. And nowadays, it's more important than your phone number. I mean, you know, or my, my handle on the internet, mi nombre en internet. You gotta know arroba, at, guion bajo, underscore, slash. But I mean, there, there's a whole new vocabulary that didn't exist back in my day. All right, boomer. <laughs> I'm not a boomer, my mom is. Oh, yeah, my mom's from the baby boom. I'm Generation X, baby. We don't care if you don't care. Because <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> but we are, we do care. That's the thing. <laughs> think about Kurt Cobain, like Eddie Vedder. These guys cared, but they didn't want people to think they cared. That's our generation. <laughs> I, um, maybe I'm, I'm summing up millions of people in just two sentences. But it seems to be popular these days to put people in categories when... I don't want to be categorized. I don't care. Yeah, I don't want you to call me anything. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, uh, it was on a, a phone call, uh, what is your gender? And I'm like, that's none of your business. No es asunto tuyo, mi género. It's none of your fucking business. Seriously, it's none of your business what I am. I I'm calling you about something that has nothing to do with that. So interesting, interesting how they like to categorize people now for some reason. Hmm, well, if you got people in categories, you can have them fighting against each other, and then they don't realize all the money that's being stolen from them. Oops, did I just say the quiet part aloud? Como decimos en inglés. Acabo de decir la parte que no hay que decir en voz alta, en voz alta. Yes, I did. <laughs> Someone had to say it. All right, uh, we also have Chris Valrol participating in the Say What soundbite. Let's see what Chris had to say. She says, I heard a man 
whose accent I can't pinpoint. You know I love that pinpoint. You know I love that pinpoint, Chris. Uh, ubicar, no? No puedo uh, acertar cien por cien. I heard a man whose accent I can't pinpoint. He's talking about a situation he was heavily punished for. No doubt about it. All right, here we go with today's spelling bee. This is round one. The first word is S-K-Y-T-R-E-E. -E. The second one is A-Z-A-B-U-D-A-I space H-I-L-L-S space J-P. The third one is T-O-R-A-N-O-M-O-N space H-I-L-L-S. The next one is M-I-D-T-O-W-N space T-O-W-E-R. The fifth one is G-O-V-E-R-N-M-E-N-T space B-U-I-L-D-I-N-G. And the last one is S-U-N-S-H-I-N-E space 60. Oh, my God. Anybody? Anybody trying to figure this one out? I went really fast there. Hopefully, somebody will be able to figure it out. Anybody? Or maybe we'll get banned again. Who knows? You never know. Sometimes they ban us here for no apparent reason. I, I don't get it personally, you know. All right. Going once. Going twice. Maybe I can give you guys uh, perhaps a little. Okay. There's a little, uh, a little clue, if you will. Una pista. A little clue for my amigos. All right. Let's take a look over here. It looks like we've got somebody who is taking a stab at it. Let's take a look. We've got Kubla. Okay, Kubla. Oh, I didn't, I didn't tell you. Okay, I've got to give it to you there. If you got it right, I got to give it to you because... In all fairness, si no sabes esta estructura, apúntala. In all fairness, para ser justo, I didn't tell you guys that these were proper nouns that needed to be capitalized. But either way, let's make sure they're correct first. Okay, but yes, these are proper nouns. I didn't tell you that, Kubla, so there's no way you could read my mind. Just like, as I said before, don't expect me to read yours either. <laughs> all right, the first one's correct. The second one is correct. The uh, third one is correct. The fourth one is correct. The fifth one as well. And the sixth one. Nice job. Kubla. Nice job. All right. Well, I'm going to go with round two right now. And let me tell you something. I think that these are pretty easy here, especially because this time I'm going to be nice. Yeah, the first time I was that guy. And we, you know what? The, the reason I do that as well is because you're going to come across that guy, the guy in round one, who's like, I don't care if you get it. It's not my problem. I'm just getting paid five bucks an hour. I don't give a crap. They don't pay me to care. You get a lot of those people, unfortunately. And the second guy's like, I want to make sure that I'm doing my job to the greatest of my ability and that the person gets the information that I give them. Which one are you? I don't know. I know which one I am. I insist on clarity when it comes to communication. I mean, it's key, you know? And things can get muddled very easily. Muddled, confuso. It's a good word we use a lot with communication and messages, right? We've also got another winner over here. Chris Valrol, wow. Give it up for Kubla and Chris. All right, let's see if the rest of you can join them in the winner circle on today's podium, spelling bee podium. The first one is S-K-Y-T-R-E-E. -E. The second one is A-Z-A-B-U-D-A-I space 
H I L L S space J P. The third one is T O R A N O M O N space H I L L S. The fourth one is M I D T O W N space T O W E E R. Excuse me, E R. I said E E R. Una E. Ves? We all make mistakes, even when you're trying to communicate clearly. The fifth one, G O V E R N M E N T space B U I L D I N G. And the last one is S U N S H I N E space 60. All right, those are your words. Again, great job to Kubla and Chris. Excellent, excellent job. Now, the reason I chose these, the tallest structures in Tokyo, is because today in history, in the year 2012, the Tokyo Sky Tree opened to the public. And what is the Tokyo Sky Tree? The Tokyo Sky Tree, it is the tallest tower in the world at that time, 634 meters, and the second tallest man made structure on Earth after the Burj Khalifa. So, the Burj Khalifa, this is at the time of the recording of this, this always changes. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Uh, tops out at 829.8 meters. Okay, now let's think of something here. In Spanish, it's coma ocho. In English, it's point eight. Muy, muy importante este detalle. Changes everything, right? So, and the Tokyo Sky Tree, which opened today in 2012, is 634 meters, okay? The tallest tower, so there are different things, the tallest structure, the tallest tower. And it's still the Tokyo Sky Tree as far as towers are concerned. And I'm talking about like towers like uh, Moncloa, like these kind of towers that are usually TV, radio signals, broadcasting towers. So number one, Tokyo Sky Tree, which I've been to. Number two, the Canton Tower in Guangzhou, China. So both of those are in Asia. And then the third one, which is a very popular one, and it's a symbol of the city of Toronto, is the CN Tower. So those are the tallest towers in the world, uh, different than the, uh, the man-made structures, buildings. So they have a lot of different categories. Well, this way they can have a lot of big, uh, a lot of different number ones, right? But we're going to look at the tallest towers, excuse me, the tallest structures now. We just looked, we just took a look at the tallest towers. So let's get, I think we need some city background over here. I feel like I want to feel like I'm in Tokyo. All right, there we go. Oh my God. Thank God I was on the shoulder. I almost got hit in the shoulder. <laughs> so yes, the Tokyo Sky Tree, that was our first word in the spelling bee. The second one was the Aza Budai Hills Mori JP Tower, okay? It is uh, 325 meters. So listen to that. The Tokyo Sky Tree, which we're celebrating the anniversary of today, is 634 meters tall. The tallest building with offices or people in it is 325.2. It's half as tall. And I've been to Tokyo. It is a city that is full of tall buildings, skyscrapers, but none uh, comes near the Tokyo Sky Tree, which as the same thing happened with the CN Tower, it becomes a symbol of your city. So that's a symbol of Tokyo. 
Then you've got the Toranomon Hills Mori Tower. And I noticed they put the word Mori in a lot of them. So I guess Mori is a kind of tower. Maybe it's a skyscraper. It's the word for skyscraper. Um, that one is 255 meters tall. So that's about 100, almost a, 100 meters lower than the first one we looked at, which is half the size of the Tokyo Sky Tree. The next one is the Midtown Tower. Now, if you were to tell me that, I'd say, oh, it's in New York City, not this one, because Midtown, I think of Manhattan. The Midtown Tower, and this was the tallest building completed in Japan in the 2000s, and this one is 248 meters tall. The next one, and this one I highly recommend, I've been to the top and it is free. Let's put it this way. This is the free, the highest free view of Tokyo that I know of, okay? And I did my research, not only because I've been to Tokyo, but there's also an FYI episode on Tokyo. So I've researched it several times. And I remember everybody, every guidebook, every trip, and wherever you went, they said, you've got to go to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, number one. Bueno, yo creo que si preguntas por el Tokyo Metro, it's on the map, it's right there. It is free. You can go to the top for free. You don't have to pay like many places when you go to their sky deck. It costs a lot of money. And the last one, I think, is the one with the best name, the Sunshine 60. Sounds like a nice place to work or live, you know? Where do you live? I live in Sunshine 60. Oh, that sounds absolutely wonderful well folks we've got to go to a quick commercial break now but we'll be right back with the second half of today's show so stick around
Hello, amigos. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name. Exclusively on Vaughn Radio. That's right, amigos. It's Vaughn Radio. After today's show, you've got Simena Holiday and her program, Test Your English. After that, you've got the lunchtime show with Rob, Grams, and Andy Vaughn. Join them for a bit of banter. Cha cha da. After that, you've got Tosh Pasqua. Tosh Pasqua from Back to Basics. After that, Jules Linares and her program, Let's Get Random, our newest addition to Vaughn Radio, followed by, hang on, Guy Williams, there he is, with Western Civilizations. Then you got Dave Boys, who will be joining us at the book fair. Wow, that's going to be fun. He'll be there Saturday, June 10th, from 1030 to 1230 at Stand 312. Perfect if you have kids. Dave Boys is a one-man show. And you can check him out every day on his program, The Salad. Followed by The Killer, Kyle Miller, and his program, Drive Time, which you can catch every day on your commute home from work. It's a great time to blow off some steam. This is Tresa, to blow off some steam and to practice your English. All right, well, folks, so much to do. So let's get right back into it with Home Phones on the Show with No Name. Wow, wow, name, wow. name. Double trouble, baby. Home Wrong phones, home phones <laughs> on the show with no Rewind. name. And home phones time, because home phones rhyme. They sound the same on the show with no name. The show with no name. Home the phones on the show with no name. Because home phones time, because home phones rhyme. They sound the same on the show with no name. Show it no name. Show it home home for home. Show it no, show it no name. Show it no name. That's right, amigos. It's homophones only on the show with no name. And here's where we're going to take a look at two words. And I want you guys to tell me if these words sound the same or not. And it's a simple yes or no. But first, you got to tell me the words as well. And well, obviously, I want it in a full sentence. So, yes, the words sound alike. No, the words don't sound. You know, you know what I'm saying. I never want just one word answers here on the show because then we're not really practicing anything if we're putting together structures in the language the key is to say full sentences and what, what am i going to say right now say them let's see how well you know me aloud and both alta of course i tell you that every day all right the first word we were talking about giving directions before is hacia adelante okay uh, it's also seguir hacia, 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 hacia adelante. It's a difficult one for me to say. It's also reenviar algo. Okay, remitir, reenviar. It's also atrevido. So if I ask you a bold question, audaz, you're like, wait, it's a little bit, no, I, estás un poco presuntuoso, presumptuous, descarado, atrevido. So this, as we're seeing, it's, um, it's definitely got a lot of meanings here. Promover, delantero, if we're talking about soccer. So, wow. We'll look at all of them. Don't you worry. As always, we'll explore the words and all their different incarnations. Our second word, since we're talking about books over here, this is prologo o preambulo. It's the introduction to a book. Okay, so the first word, many, many meanings, hacia adelante, delantero, which makes sense. Um, no quiero ser atrevido, right, would be that word as well, or presuntuoso, I think you'd say. And uh, the second one is a part of a book. So the good news, the first one's got a million meanings, and we're going to look at them. 
The second one only has one, okay? And you'll, I hope you'll like the prologo of my new book as well. As always, we offer you some advice and just some encouragement and tell you how to use the book and all that jazz y todo eso. All right, let's uh, also listen to our Say What soundbite too while you guys are thinking it through. Here's your Say What soundbite for the third time. The thing was, you know, I did something wrong and uh, I was punished for it. I still believe rather harshly because while I was in there, I almost daily I picked up papers and read about people doing exactly the same as I'd done. All right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's your third listen of today's Say What Soundbite. Good luck. I hope somebody's able to get it, even though the person is speaking very quickly. I think it's pretty easy to understand what they're saying. I could be wrong, but mm, I, I think today's is definitely doable. No, asequible. All right, speaking of doable, let's see if our homophones were doable. German, those are the correct words. And German says they are homophones. All right, German, first one. Let's see, Kubla. He says it's mm and mm, and they're not homophones. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> All right, let's see. Born to Iron Man. Born to Iron Man's like, I don't know if they sound alike. Well, just be careful. Born to Iron Man, your second word is wrong. It's spelled wrong, okay? So just now when we when we look at it, we'll look at the spelling as well. Also, it looks like we've got a winner in today's Say What Soundbite. Give it up for Kubla. <laughs> All right, all right, excellent job. Also, we've got Chris over here. She's saying, I'd say they're not homophones. Let's see, German says, okay, German's given, him, given us them in context. All right, well, always in this section, there's just one thing we do to clear up any doubt. The first word is forward, forward. Okay, you've got to move forward. I forwarded the email to you, okay? I forwarded, it's a, it's, an, it's a regular verb, so forwarded it, difícil decirlo, eh? Dilo tú en voz alta. Did you forward it to me? Yes, I forwarded it. I forwarded it. Así se pronuncia. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. And as we said, forward has many, many meanings here. So let's take a look. You've got to move forward, we just said. You got to forward an email, he plays as a forward, okay? Also, I don't mean to be forward, but what what do you wear? Panties or grandy? You know, give us braga. That's when somebody asks you an inappropriate question. You're saying, you're being a little too forward, okay? But also it's, you know, be forward with me, Sid. Honesto, too. So it's got a lot of meanings here. Uh, what else? Uh, forward sports position, remitid. To bring something forward, una reunión. So we use this all the time. All right. And the second one, forward. So did you forward me the forward? Did you forward me the forward? Absolutely. Where I come from, they are. Now, a lot of you said no. Forward, forward. I, I think in British English, they would sound the same as well. So I don't want to be forward, but the word forward, hacia adelante, hacia adelante, sounds the same as forward, the first part of a book. So excellent job. Who was the first one? German said that they sound the same. Kubla and Born. Well, Kubla says they're not homophones. Born says he wasn't sure. Chris says they're not. So tough one there. That one made you guys sweat a little bit. Well, excellent job to German. The rest of you, well, some of you knew, you thought you knew, and others were, hmm, you were second guessing yourself. So yes, in the United States, where I come from, these words sound exactly the same. And unless you hear them in context, you wouldn't know which one they were saying. So folks, hope you know the words now. I don't mean to be forward, but you need to know how to pronounce at least 
the first one, which sounds exactly like the second one. So that's the good thing about homophones. If you can pronounce one when they are homophones, you can pronounce the other. It's the same exact sound. So practice. And remember, that's the part of the show where you got to practice aloud no matter what. Pase lo que pase. All right, but now it's time for another part of the show. Name that movie. Name that movie. That's right, amigos. That's right. It's Name That Movie only on the show with no name. And as always, this is a part of the show where we take a look at a movie. Maybe you've seen the movie. Maybe you haven't. I think most of you have seen this one. And if not, you've definitely seen the first part. All right? And I'll tell you another thing. Um, This was perhaps, I'm giving you some clues here. This was perhaps the biggest disappointment that we've ever had with um, a sequel, in my opinion, because they made us wait a long time to get this movie, this sequel. People were begging for it. And when it came out, it flopped. Nobody liked it. Even the hardcore fans are like, yeah, that's not the sequel we wanted. You made us wait. So it's like the same way Back to the Future made us wait for that second part, but guess what? It was worth the wait. But valió la pena esperarlo, right? In this case, it was definitely not worth the waste. The wait, excuse me, IMO, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many others. So here we go, I'll give you the trailer. Maybe you'll recognize it just from the trailer. Derek and Hansel are lured into modeling again in Rome, where they find themselves the target of a sinister conspiracy. Okay. So Derek and Hansel, hmm, those names ring a bell. You you either know them or you're not, or you don't, excuse me, are lured. And if you lure somebody, con Thebo, Thebo's lure, you try and attract them in a negative way. I'm going to lure you here. Lure, se escribe. Into modeling. Okay. Again. So that means they were modeling before. In Rome, in Roma, where they find themselves the target, and be careful with this word. You don't know how many times I've heard people say target. The target of a sinister conspiracy. And conspiración is a conspiracy. And sinister, a ver cómo lo traducen. It's evil, malvado, siniestro. Oh, makes sense, siniestro. So there we go, my amigos. Let's see if we've got any winners. Please give it up for Chris Valrol. All right, Chris Valrol got it. Well, kind of. You got the, the, the first part, Zoolander. It's the, the, we're looking at part two today. Zoolander 2. But you know what? Since... Chris made a totally native joke. We're going to give it to her. And she says, I have to rub shoulders with German in order to learn more about homophones. To rub shoulders. Codearse con. So, wow, we looked at a lot of different meanings. We could do a future quadruple trouble with the word shoulder, right? Uh, Let's see. So, yes, the movie is Zoolander 2. Uh, German says, I've been studying a lot since I'm in a wheelchair. Oh, man, sorry to hear that, German. He says, I think it's the only upside to it. And what about that totally native? Is that an upside? That's a really native way of saying ventaja. The upside. Excellent, German. You can really tell that you've been working hard on your English and having fun as well. All right. And I remember doing the same thing. I was in a wheelchair. As you guys know, I was hit by a car. I couldn't walk for a month. I couldn't put any um, weight on my foot. And I said, I got to do stuff. And I'd read, I mean, I, in the end, I was more active in a wheelchair mentally than I, than I am when I'm not in one. So that's great. What you've done is uh, realize that every cloud has a silver lining, right? 
has a silver lining is um, no hay mal que por bien no venga would be the translation. So uh, the announcement of this movie, the much anticipated announcement of this movie came from a fashion show where Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson, the stars of the movie, showed up, se presentaron, and they walked down the runway. Now, I'm not talking about La Pista de, de Despegue, because that's the runway, too. In context here, we're talking about La Pista de los Modelos. So the runway in character as Derek and Hansel. And this is the 12th time they've worked together. But it was, I don't know how much money it made, but I know it made a lot of people, a lot of Zoolander fans who loved the original, it made us, and I include myself, pretty upset. And uh, a film critic, which, okay, critics, just by their name, I don't like what they do. Me, me dedico a crit criticar. Okay, good job. <laughs> you know, okay, I'm sure you make a lot of money, but sounds like fun. You know, just looking at what other people do and criticizing it. That sounds like fun. You sound like the fun guy in high school, el tío divertido, right? But he's Leonard Malton, very, very famous film critic in the United States. And he said on his website that this is the first movie that he has ever walked out on. Yeah, to walk out on, salir antes de que acabe, in his professional career. He said that he, and I quote, had an immediate reaction of annoyance, agobio, and impatience, impaciencia. He also said, and I quote, the film was stupid right from the start, desde el comienzo, and that he left before it hit the hour mark, antes de que llegara a una hora. I didn't leave, but I felt like leaving. I was like, really? We had to wait this long. So Zoolander 1 came out in 2016. Let's see, Zoolander, the first one, 2001. You're going to make people wait over 15 years for a piece of garbage movie? Well, I'll tell you what. They, they put out a Zoolander 3. You know nobody's going to see it. I don't care how good it is. <laughs> That's what happens when you take, uh, you know, something that worked and the timing isn't right. You're just doing it. You know, just to make money, I'm sure people were begging for it. You know, it's like when a group goes back on tour and you know that they, they can't stand each other. Se odian entre ellos. They don't like doing what they do anymore. You can see it. They lip sync. I mean, big groups such as Kiss have been caught lip syncing and using audio tracks. So you're like, wait a second. You're charging me 150 euros minimum. I'm not even talking about good seats to go to a concert. And you can't even play your fucking instrument? Really? You can't sing for real? Not me. I'm not going. So that stuff works once. That's why I think it's important to your reputation is everything. You know what I mean? You can't screw people. You screw people over once. Smart people won't let you do it again. Right? A smart person will be like, <laughs> I'm not buying another ticket. I'm not giving, giving you any more money. You, you, you had your chance. You blew it. Tuviste tu oportunidad. Y la cagaste, Burt Lancaster. All right, let's take a look at... Now, that doesn't mean we can't learn from the movie. Let's learn from it over here. Mugatu, who is played by Will Ferrell. And, and, and there's the other thing. You have literally one of the greatest comedic casts in the world. You don't know what to do with him. Good job, Zoolander, too. So Mugatu says, shut up, Valentino. Que te calles, Valentino. Just shut up. Everyone, shut up. Callaos. There's no fountain of youth, right? No hay fuente de la juventud. Fountain of youth, like Ponce de Leon was looking for. And then Tommy Hilfiger, yeah, he had a cameo. As always, a lot of people had cameos. These movies were famous, too, for all the cameos in the first one. But they were good. They were justified. It wasn't, I'll just put Tommy Hilfiger in the movie because he's popular. And, you know, Tommy Hilfiger fans will like it. That's not a good strategy. Well, they, I'm sure they learned that the hard way. He goes, there's no fountain of youth. And Tommy Hilfiger says, what? And he says, I mean, Adam and Eve and Steve? Are you serious? So I guess they're talking about one of these uh, relationships, these open relationships. 
So Adam and Eve is Adán y Eva. Adam and Eve and Steve. Y Steve, or like a threesome, como un trío. He goes, are you serious? Is the bus in serio? And that's something we say a lot. You know how I know? Because my daughter says it all the time. Why? She heard me say it. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> you actually believe that crap? ¿Te creíste esa basura, esa mierda? You believe that crap? And Alexander Wang, who I think is a, uh, a fashion designer. Vera Wang is, maybe they're cousins. I don't know. Well, Alexander Wang says, what? And Mugatu says, it's literally, it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, right? It is, es la cosa más estúpida que he oído en mi vida. I get it if Alexander Wang believes it. Lo creo si Alexander Wang lo cree. No, um, uh, lo entiendo si él lo cree. But the rest of you? Come on. Saying that he's not very bright, right? No es muy listo. And then Anna Wintour, who is another va very famous person in the fashion world. I think she was the editor of Vogue. The Devil Wears Prada. That's her life story. So Anna Wintour says, oh, please, por favor. So one thing is, please, por favor. And one is, oh, please. De hecho, decimos, please. <laughs> Añadimos una silo. Oh, please, please. Right, very different intonation there. Oh, please. Without me, you'd still be cutting patterns at men's warehouse. And a pattern is un estampado. You'd be cutting patterns at men's warehouse. Que es como un almacén, un grandes, uno de estos grandes almacenes. And Mugatu says, oh, look, it's the white witch from Narnia. It is la bruja blanca de Narnia. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's just Anna Winter. I'll knock your teeth out. Te voy a sacar los dientes con un puñetazo. I will knock your teeth out. And Anna Winter says, I'll rip your goddamn tongue out. Yo te arranco, rip. I'll rip your goddamn tongue out. And Mugatu says, check out the new spring collection from Hilfiger. Bought to you, brought to you, excuse me, by white privilege. And white privilege is something that they say in the United States that if you're black, you don't have the same opportunities. Again, I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm saying it's something they say in the United States, white privilege. I, I remember having to work for everything and still now. So uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I never received that white privilege, maybe because it's, I'm Hispanic, but I, I don't remember ever getting it. But that's like a thing in the United States that every one of those things to separate us that I said before. One of those. Yeah. So brought to you by white privilege. Que Tommy Phil Hilfiger está donde está por ser blanco y tener privilegios que no todo el mundo tiene. Again, that's uh, another story. So Tommy Hilfiger says, you couldn't make a down jacket to save your life. And what? A down jacket? Well, jacket, you know, it's jacket, that we say jacket. And down is from goose feathers, plumas. So a lot of times we talk about a down comforter or a duvet, un edredon. A lot of, when they're stuffed with feathers, like the Tommy Hilfiger puffy jackets, those are made of down. Okay, es la misma palabra que abajo. So think about that. You might even have a, a double or a triple trouble. He was down because he couldn't find his down jacket. <laughs> All right, hey, if it helps you remember it, it works. So he says, uh, asshole. And that's a word you'll hear often. It's not a pretty word, but it's a word you'll hear people use in English often. And I think the, the equivalent in Spanish would be big goat, right? When you say, eres un, una cabra, no. A big goat. <laughs> Yeah, it's somebody who's mean, somebody who's not very nice, not a desirable person. All right, well, folks, I can't believe it. We've got to go to the fourth and final part. But first, a quick commercial break. When we come back, famous birthdays. Name that lyric. Say what soundbite. Jokes. And so much more. So, if I were you guys, I wouldn't even think of going anywhere. 
Stick around. Hello, 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 amigos. Welcome back. Welcome back to the fourth and final part of today's show with no name. So much to do, so much fun to be had. And we've got 26 minutes to fit it all in. 26 minutes is all we've got. So let's make it count, amigos. Thank you so much again for your constant participation. This show is interactive and wouldn't work. Well, if I have to do it, I could do it. I could fill two hours teaching English. But half the fun is interacting with you guys and hearing from you guys. So you have a voice on the show. And we haven't done it in a while, but if you'd like to send us a voice message, you can do it. Send it to my email address. Jot it down. Alonso at groupofon.com. Alonso at groupofon.com. No periods, no underscores, all together. Alonso at groupofon.com. Send us a message. Introduce yourself and say, hey. I'm a show with no namer. My name is fill in the blank. And I wanted to share this with Alberto or with my fellow students. We'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line, como decimos. Drop a line. Great. Very native way of saying, dime algo. Drop me a line. All right. Well, folks, we've got so much to do. So let's get right back into it with today's Double Trouble. Ahora sí. Now we're talking, baby. Yeah, you know what time it is. Give it up. Double. Double Trouble. I said double. Double Trouble. Double. Double Trouble. That's right, amigos, it's Double Trouble only on the show with no name. And again, this is a part of the show where we look at a translation with a twist. We look at words with many meanings. And we've already looked at the word forward. We looked at the word shoulder, right? We looked at many, many words that have many meanings. But this is one where you guys have to tell me the double words here. So you have to use the same word twice. Siempre tienes que hacer lo mejor que puedas. I know I don't have to remind you guys. You do that every day. Pero bueno saberlo. Siempre tienes que hacer lo mejor que puedas. Y no dejes que pueda contigo. 
o que te venzca, venzca, I don't know, que te gane, que puede, con, que pueda contigo. No, no dejes que es subjuntivo, right? No dejes que te fastidie, no fastidia. O oh, no, me equivoco. There's that subjunctive again that I love to hate. <laughs> all of us, it's not just me. If it was just me, I would, you know, I'd be like, damn it, I've got a problem. It's all of us, Gidis. We don't get it. <laughs> But I'm finding those patterns. The same way I tell you, esto igual a esto. Un, un, esto siempre va a ir un gerundio aquí. Entonces, acuérdate, ya está. Da igual el verbo que metas, es gerundio. You know, you got to remember those little formulas. And I don't mean remember them written. I mean, remember how they, how they feel, how they sound coming out of your mouth. That's what we're looking for. Okay? So siempre tienes que hacer lo mejor que puedas. Y no dejas que pueda contigo. ¿no? Lo que sea, la vida, las cosas, que pueda contigo. Ooh, this is going to be a really, really tough one, I think. But I know somebody is going to figure it out, at least one of you. And in the meantime, I'll give you our Say What soundbite. This is the fourth listen, so if you'd like to participate, this is your last chance. And then in a little bit, what we'll do is we'll take a look at who it is, what's being said, and all that jazz. Are you ready? Here we go. The thing was, you know, I did something wrong, and uh, I was punished for it. I still believe rather harshly, because while I was in there, I almost daily I picked up papers and read about people doing exactly the same as I'd done. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That's our Say What soundbite, as I said, not from my continent. So not from the Americas, not South America, not Central America, not North America. Hmm, interesting, huh? But it's interesting how a lot of you guys heard a, um, how you go, a lot of you heard an American accent there which is interesting, but we're going to find out in, in just a little bit who it is and where they're from. And in fact, as with many of our Say What sound bites, you're going to know who the person is. And this is a cool thing too, because sometimes like George Foreman, Kurt Cobain, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have heard their voices or not, because I know doblan las cosas. So you're like, you know, Tom, this is Tom Hanks and big, por ejemplo, oh, no, pero <laughs> you know what I mean? So look at it, too, as an opportunity to hear what these people really sound like. I didn't even know. The other day, when we did Joey Ramone, de los Ramones, from the Ramones, I heard him sing a million times. I never saw an interview with him, so I didn't know how he spoke. Now I know. <laughs> And there are some, like Tom Hanks or, you know, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, where instantly you're like, I know that voice, you know. All right. So... I'm looking over here at our virtual classroom in our chat room, and uh, nobody's gotten it yet. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But we do have somebody who's figured out our Say What soundbite as well. Please give it up for the lovely Laura. Excellent job. All right. Now, what's the deal, folks? Or as we say, what's the deal, banana peel? It's un poco, bueno, cuando rima, rima, right? Um, anybody, anybody double, really? Come on, haz lo mejor que puedas, como dice la primera parte. <laughs> hey, that's what I want you to do. So al menos podrás decirme, voy a hacer lo mejor que pueda, pero no sé si es correcto. Siempre tienes que hacer lo mejor que puedas, right? Y no dejes que pueda contigo la vida. O sea, es un double trouble en español. P poder, right? Laura says, now he sounds British from Wales or Scotland. Laura, you're on the right track. Now we're talking. You're in the right uh, continent now. <laughs> Even in the right area of the world. So great job, great job. And your classmates agree. So guys, don't tell me that nobody's going to take a stab at this double trouble. Además, cuando la frase es, siempre tienes que hacer lo mejor que puedas. No me... As you say in Spanish, no me... Hmm. <laughs> es que me sale del alma de oírlo. Like, come on, man. In English, sin ser vulgar. Come on, guys. <laughs> okay, let's see. Germán is taking a stab at it. You know what? You're going to get an applause right now, Germán, because you're the only one who took a stab at it. Sometimes 
Yeah. It's about getting it right. Sometimes it's about doing your best. Haciendo lo mejor que puedas. And Germán says, you have to give your best. That's fine too. Germán, the first part's right. You have to do your best or give your best. We don't say make, right? Or you've got to do the best you can, but it's easier to say you're tu mejor. You've got to do your best or the best you can. A lo mejor es más fácil para ti decirlo así. Los dos son correctos. Or you've got to give your best. That's fine. Una muy nativo. You've got to put your best foot forward. We looked at that word forward, no? Otra. No? So these we just looked at a couple good ways to say it. And we looked at another meaning of forward. In serio? <laughs> so you have to give your best. Don't let, ever let it best you. I like it, German. You are on the right track. And again, <laughs> it's, e it's even right. Because to best is a verb. So you know what? It's absolutely correct. But I was looking for a, a collocation. But it's still right. When you're right, you're right. So you were first and you were right. <laughs> so you have to give your best. Don't ever let it best you. ¿Sabías eso? Que best es un verbo. Mejor, uh, poder contigo. He, he bested me. Me ganó. Me, think about it. Ganar. Poder contigo. Same kind of deal. He best. Okay. He... Um, I bowled 200. Yo tiré en los bolos 200. He bowled 220. He bested me by 20, right? To best. So it's a, a verb. If you didn't know, it's a regular verb, as you've just heard. Excellent job, German. So it's a little different than the one I have here, which I'll show you in just a moment. Let's see. Kubla. Kubla says, you have to always come up to scratch and don't let it scratch you. I like it. It's a worthy effort. A worthy effort, but don't let it scratch you. It's, eh. it's, a, it's a stretch. Un poco rebuscado there. But I like it, Kubla. It's good. Creative nonetheless. I wouldn't say it. It doesn't sound natural, but it's good. You, you, you know, you, okay. Good. You, you at least tried. And here you get, you always get points for effort in my class. Okay. So, siempre tienes que hacer lo mejor que puedes. You always have to do your best or to do the best you can. And don't let it, life, the game, the situation, siendo el it, don't let it get the best of you. Esto es frase hecha. So, somebody lost, I'm thinking when we were kids playing sports. Oh, man, we lost the third game in a row. Tres. El tercer partido consecutivo, consecutivo. Said, don't let it get the best of you, man. It's okay. We'll, we'll win the next one. No, que no pueda contigo, que no te frustre, que no te gane. B vencer, right? So, it's interesting there, because that can be a confusing one for my students. It got the best of me. No es algo positivo. Isn't that crazy? So I know I remember seeing it. It came up in a class in one of my, in my community. Surgió, and students said, wait, Alberto, to get the best of you is sacar lo bueno de ti. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> to bring out the best in you is son sacar lo bueno. So my daughter brings out, vamos a ver varias cosas. My daughter brings out the best in me. So saca la mejor versión de mí. To bring out, porque es muy importante la estructura aquí, el orden de las palabras. To bring out the best in me. You guys, as my students, you bring out the best in me. Okay? And if you make a mistake, I always tell you, don't let it get the best of you. Okay? No dejes que te supere. Don't let it get the best of you. Coger tu mejor parte, lo que te hace molar. Think about it that way. So it's a negative thing. And to do your best... I think I tell you that day in, day out over here. I expect you guys to always do your best. All right. And there's Chris giving the best, the best, the best of you. Great song. I don't know which way he's using it. If he's given the best or if it's gotten the best. So I, I don't remember the, the lyrics exactly, Chris, because you're asking me what it means. I, I don't remember. But great, great that you found that there in pop culture. So you're not just a movie queen, Chris. <laughs> All right, folks, it's time to move on, though. It's time for your joking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what did the guy say when he walked into the bar? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. You get it? Ouch. 
He walked into the bar. <laughs> um, you're joking. That's right, amigos. It is our joke section. And as always, we're going to take a look at a, uh, a joke or two. And hopefully you guys will get these jokes. All right. So here we go. The um, first joke. I spent, oh, and these are book jokes. Why? Because in case I didn't tell you, I've got a new book coming out. It's called This Book is the Shit. And you better get it. If you like the way I teach here, you're going to love the way I teach in my books. I imagine you have the other two. This book is the milk, the first one, or this book is the remilk, or this book is the, this book is the milk two, which is the second one, and this one, which nobody has yet, because I don't even have it yet in my hands. So it'll be there at the book fair as always. All right. So I spent all day reading. Yeah, you know. Well, this weekend, yeah, I spent all day reading. It was bound to happen. <laughs> bound to happen? No? <laughs> it was bound to happen. <laughs> Do you guys get it? It was bound to happen. It was bound to happen. Es, uh, estaba seguro. Era fijo que iba a pasar. It was bound to happen. But where's the joke? Well, books have a binding. And books are bound. So, bound is encuadernado. And a binding comes from the word bind, bound, bound. Es encuadernación. Do you get it now? So, also, you're bound by a contract. If you have a mortgage, you are bound, atado. Also, another way to think of it, same idea. This is a New York-bound flight. Este vuelo está va rumbo a Nueva York. Está atado. Think about it. To bind is to tie. So it, it ata algo a otra cosa. And what did they do? In the first days when they used to encuadernar, ataban, right? They used string to do it. So it kind of makes sense. Do you get the joke? I guess only uh, avid readers would get it. I spent all day reading. It was bound to happen. Y se usa esto, ¿no? Estaba escrito. Iba a pasar sí o sí. Also bound, encuadernado. <laughs> Encuadernación or whatever the word is. It was bound to happen. Well, I, as I told you guys, my weekend was fully booked. <laughs> fully booked? Lleno de libros. Oh, fully booked. Eh, no tenía disponibilidad. <laughs> Well, hey, I'm, you know, since it was a tough couple years, you know, I didn't go out very much. I didn't socialize. Well, I'm, uh, I'm turning over a new leaf. <laughs> <laughs> to turn over a new leaf? Pasar <laughs> página? Yeah, well, I want to start a new chapter. We say the same thing, to start a new chapter or to turn over a new leaf. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That was three jokes in one, by the way, if you were paying attention. So I got, I got another one before we move on, though, but we got to hurry up. What did the librarian say to the book? Okay. What did the librarian say to the book? I can tell people like you. They keep checking you out. <laughs> I can tell, se nota, I can tell people like you, que caes bien a la gente. They keep checking you out. Que gustas a la gente. To check out is sacar de ahí, tomar prestado. I'm going to check out three books, right? And to check out is echar un vistazo como ojea. Ooh, are you, are you checking me out? Haciéndome ojitos. <laughs> hey, I think it's a, a, a great joke. And I think it was long overdue. <laughs> <laughs> I promise that's the last joke. It was long overdue. Que ya, ya tocaba. If something is overdue, it's atrasado, vencido. So overdue. Uh, your library books that you checked out, that you took out, they're overdue. Eso se escribe overdue, todo junto. But if something is long overdue, es tan esperado. This book is long overdue. You guys have been begging me for a third milk book for a long time. So it is long overdue. But 
if you check out this book in the library, make sure you return it on time. You don't want to pay those fines when those uh, books are overdue. And I know I overdo it every day here. <laughs> I said there were no more jokes. Well, to overdo is pasarse tres pueblos, pero ese es de o, no de u e. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll stop, I'll stop, but only because it's time for famous birthday trivia. That's right. That's right, amigos. It is our famous birthday trivia, and we really have to fly through this because we don't have time. The first person is known by his last name. He was the singer of the Smiths, the singer and lyricist of the Smiths. Oh, big mouth. La, 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 la. Uh, now, let me explain something. The Smiths are huge. And this guy, as a solo artist, is huge as well. Uh, born uh, to working-class Irish immigrants in Lancashire, England. All right? And, um, man, the Smiths. If you don't know the lead singer and songwriter of the Smiths, then you won't know this guy ever. Number two, a fashion model. That's right. She's a model who's been in many, many movies. And she wasn't in Zoolander 2, but she's been in movies and even videos. I didn't know this about her. Uh, she was in Bob Marley's video, Is This Love? Is This Love? In 1978. She was eight years old, if you did the math. She was born in 1970. She was also tap dancing in the video, I'll tumble for you, I'll tumble for you. So she got her start as a kid in music videos. And when I was a kid, she was one of the hottest top models. And I mean hottest, buenísima, and hottest como... Que vendía a tope. That can be both things, right? And last but not least, this guy was the best. Well, some say he was the best, but I mean, that was his last name. And you know now how to use that word best, to best somebody, to give your best, to do your best, to something get the best of you, something bring out the best. Well, this guy's last name is that, which is a kind of a cool name for a Northern Irish footballer. He played for Manchester United most of his career, but he got in a lot of trouble as be, for being the bad boy of soccer, el malote, the bad boy of soccer. And he, you know, he would show up drunk to games and interviews. He was getting in trouble with the law much too often. And uh, well, uh, it's it's a shame because he was an excellent, and some say the greatest to ever play for Northern Ireland, but he was a disaster off the field. And ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Chris Valrol, number one, Morrissey. Number two, Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell. And number three, George Best. And drugs and alcohol got the best of him. He did his best on the field, but those things got the best of him, right? I imagine soccer brought out the best in him. ¿Ves? Otra vez jugando con esas estructuras. Porque sé que todos sabéis la palabra best. ¿Pero lo sabéis usar de verdad? Well, I hope so after today's show. And this was George Best in an interview. He goes, the thing was, you know, I did something wrong. This is Northern Ireland, by the way, the accent. And I was punished for it, castigado. And I still believe rather harshly. Como os dije al principio, el harsh se usa bastante. Uh, that was harsh. Eso fue muy fuerte, muy duro. Eso sería esa palabra. Oh, I can't believe you said that. That was really harsh, man. So harshly, severo. Because when I was in there, in the in prison, behind bars, I almost daily picked up papers, newspapers, periódicos, and read about people who were doing exactly the same thing as I had done. O sea, que a mí me arrestaron, pero a otros no por hacer... Lo mismo. So he thought he was, he thought they were out to get him. Que iban a por él. Here he is, legend 
who was unfortunately overshadowed by a lot of negative things in his life. But uh, on the pitch, he still will be remembered for scoring goals and just being a legend. And we're talking about birthday boy George Best. The thing was, you know, I did something wrong and uh, I was punished for it. I still believe rather harshly because while I was in there, I almost daily I picked up papers and read about people doing exactly the same as I'd done. All right, folks, and it's time for Name That Lyric. Hi, hello, Alberto. I think the song is... <laughs> no? Sorry, bye. Name that lyric, name that lyric, name that lyric, name that lyric only on the show with no name, 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 name that lyric only on the show with no name, the show with no name, the show with no name, it's name that lyric only on the show with no name. That's right. That's right, amigos. It's Name That Lyric only on the show with no name. And thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing the magic every day, folks. We just have a minute. Solo tenemos un minuto. The song is How Soon Is Now by the Smiths, Morrissey, our birthday boy. How Soon Is Now. And you want to know something? Even as a native speaker, I didn't get the words right. Y te digo por qué. Empieza, I am the sun. Yo pensaba que hacía el sol. Dice el hijo. I am the sun. Puede ser cualquiera de los dos, los homófonos. And the air. Yo pensaba que hacía el, el, el sol y el aire. Y no, dices el hijo y el heredero. I swear to God. <laughs> yo, yo me quedé. What? I am the sun and the air. I hope you guys know this song. It's a really cool song. And follow along with us. You can Google the lyrics. Thank you so much, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here with you as every day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll be back tomorrow with more. I promise. Bye-bye. Here we go. I am the sun. I am the air.